care how much water you use. Come back ten times and mix it till you got a thousand gallons if you want. Don't leave those under trees. Just keep spreading it until it's there. And that's how much you got. It's the hundred gallons, even though it may have taken five hundred gallons here. Yeah. So you see the way that works? Ma'am, do you follow me? Do you oh, follow yeah. me? Yeah, it's not a dilution. You have to look at it. Anyway, when we build these uh, microbes up, if you don't do anything to harm them, uh, you can start slowing down how much tea you use and how often you use it. Now, you can't hurt it, you can't overdo it, but you can be wasting your time, money, and effort. You can be on something else. And you'll know, you'll see that soil start coming to life. You'll be able to, when you soil, when you can take a handful of soil and pick it up and just squeeze it, it just stays together a little bit and it's dark and it's, uh, you, you will conquer. You've got some good organic material in there, some organic matter, a lot of nutrients. Pretend that you're in the bug business, not the plant. Feed the soil and let the soil feed the plants. That's its job. I don't care what you're growing. If you pick out healthy plants, then you won't have the best seed. That we don't. If you get good, healthy plants from good, healthy soil, I basically, I don't have anything planted right now, but a bunch of uh, tomatoes from the early ones I didn't kill. And I did, for some reason, go nuts. I have, like, uh, enough fennel to feed all of us all the fennel we need to the garden. It just all grew this year, I guess, the rains and everything. And I always plant two or three times more than I need because I love the caterpillars. And what I do is I pick the plants out that have already come to head, and then I take the caterpillars every morning and put them on their plants. <laughs> so that way I get to keep the swallowtails, I get the butterflies, and they don't eat my family. I don't know why that's so hard for people. I do the same thing with tomatoes. I sacrifice a few tomato plants, and when I get those fantastic worms on them, I just pick them up and put them on their plants. And I, they don't eat much. Uh, we're going to give some away in a minute, guys. I saw some people bring jugs. Do you make anything to ask about tea? I'm so used to doing my same. Does anybody not used it? Does anybody understand? Yes. I want to, um, Go ahead. The microbes don't last. I mean, you can't just make the tea and then store it for a while, right? You have to use it right away. Here's what the story is. I just read again in that one fellow's book, and he and I had to agree on it. If I just give you a jug right now, three or four hours, and then they're starting to appreciate it. Okay. Start to like it. If you have an air stone, keep them aerated. They'll stay a couple of days in pretty good numbers. You're going to keep me along with that. You need to put a teaspoon or two of molasses in there for my for, uh, bacterial teas. And uh, I'm told, and this is where it was new to him, I mean new to me, that he said, he says they'll do about two or three days in decent refrigeration. Oh. Refrigerate them in about two hours for to use them, bring them out and let them get to semi-decent temperatures. And that evidently, of course, slows down the progress of the bugs uh, going away. If you uh, compost the yard, mm -hmm. then you put this on, or mm -hmm. you put this yeah, on and then compost? I, I would put the compost on and water it, but that's because I, uh, one of my friends, Howard Garrett, is really big on a thing called dry molasses. Uh, in all the studies I can see, for the dollar you spend, you get a lot more goodies out of wet molasses. <laughs> so whenever I do anything, whether it's compost, mulch, put out the rock powders I recommend, like lava sand, green sand, decayed granite, all the about once in every five or ten years. But when I put that out, I always make my either my tea or I just make a molasses mix. A couple or three ounces to the gallon, and I water it all in the molasses. It is magic. If you've been doing chemical lawns, or if you've got a neighbor that has, take a tablespoon or so of molasses and put it in a gallon of water and go out and write your name on the lawn. <laughs> and in about oh, a week God. you can go and out there and read your name. And kill us. It was that green. It'll be so much different than their lawn that you can see where you poured this stuff in a pattern. Wow. Now, that won't continue happening. It's happening because their soil screwed up. Once it gets caught up with, you quit seeing that green effect, you tell yourself you've got a pretty good group of microbes living there. Now, don't kill them. Don't ruin them with uh, uh, misuse of synthetics. Herbicides, we're finding out, are at least as dangerous, if not more dangerous, than pesticides on a number of the good microbes. It's, it's kind of interesting. Do you need to say something, Mike? You just came Yeah, Bruce, I just want to say we just laid out a little late. But oh, there are, okay. There, there'll be some people working over hey, here. Hey, we'll, we'll be that, babbling. So. I, I don't mind repeating. <laughs> I'll have to repeat a few Thank answers. You. That's well, great. I'm glad. That doesn't bother me all. Thank you. We've given you, away you've a introduced routine. yourself, and <laughs> oh, you're off to the races. we got 2 o'clock. I do my show. <laughs> So his chem lawn is, mm -hmm. isn't good for the neighborhood. Who's here? You're scaring the, me. My neighbor. No. It's not good for the whole neighborhood. I mean, uh, the runoff. a lot of people are very successful with chemicals. And it was for a reason. Uh, when we started them, uh, we needed them. It was a cheap. Uh, you know what chemicals come from, right? Every bit of everything you use is petroleum. 
already uh, about 9 to 11 percent of all the natural gas in the United States is used to make fertilizer. We're worried about being short of fuel and we're putting it in the ground in the form of uh, unfortunately soluble chemistry that can end up in our waterways and in our drinking water and in my Guadalupe River. And the Guadalupe's getting worse all the time. It was a pretty pristine river for a long time. Man across the street used Vigoro in his place. Mm -hmm. All that. Well, you got Vigoro in your water as soon as he does. So that's one reason I really promote. That's uh, one reason I really promote compost teas and, and organic fertilizers. It does not take much, folks, to grow good, healthy plants. You need a source of. I call the word manure. That doesn't necessarily mean it came out of the south end of North Mountain Cap. Uh, rye grass breaking down and brought down to be a green manure. Uh, vetch is an excellent green manure because it's full of uh, mycogen. But the, what you need is a maybe better term would be not to confuse it is organic matter of some kind. What about you, this? What about this Alamo girl that they sent over here? I know it's I'm a, sewage. I'm in big trouble, but I used to work on that. I'll be as straight as I can. Yeah. Uh, Alamo Grow is an excellent nitrogen source, better than you might think. Uh, without getting too deep into this, they've discovered that human manure is actually a better ratio than almost any other animal. I guess because we're up at the top of the chain as omnivores. And, and as you may or may not know, a number of your foods coming out of China, at least historically, have been grown in nothing but, but reworked human waste. Well, that's repugnant as hell to everybody in the United States. But, sewers in Europe. Well, yeah, it's perfectly acceptable. We just have a little, a little, it's kind of back to this hygiene theory I told you about. You know, in America, we don't do much of this, but other places they do. That's what that is. Bio sludge, they go down to the factory and everything that goes in uh, is broken down, composted, put in the bag. What about fish emulsion? What about what? Fish, fish emulsion. Fish emulsion is excellent. Fish hydrolysate is better. Let me finish Alamo, brother, because I want to make sure you see both sides. I just don't want to mislead you. I wouldn't put it on my vegetable garden. I'd put it on everything else I have. Now, I, the reason is mostly more than my wife and me. She finds it just repugnant that she's using it. My only other problem is having, as Mike knows, I was general manager at Gardenville, and I got to see all the paperwork. And even though they certainly check for arsenic, and they check for mercury, and they check for all what we call the heavy metals, and they check for a lot of pesticides and things, at this moment, they don't check for dioxins, which is becoming more and more in, uh, uh, part of our environment. Uh, a little more scary to me is they don't check for any hormones. I don't know if you all know, when you take Primarin or birth control pills, that they don't break down in a lot of this. Even the microbes that you and I ordinarily think would break down you know, bio biological material, when they go back, you can still find, uh, especially pseudo-hormones, pseudo-estrogens, in a number of things that we thought would have been completely decomposed by. And I don't know that that gets in the plant. I guess what I'm telling you, I, for those of you that listen to your regular, I have what they call the dually approach. If you have an option and there's a lesser evil, unless you have a reason not to, take the lesser evil. Uh, I don't use Teflon. I don't think it'll kill me anymore. But it's in every baby born today, did you know that? In the umbilical of every human child born in America today, they can find traces of PFO directly traced back to Teflon. That scares me. What is it going to do in 55 or 100 years? I don't know. You know it's illegal. It's been outlawed. But they gave them until 2015 to change it. They discovered in 2005 that it was dangerous. Uh, the EPA filed, uh, filed a suit against Dow for the largest lawsuit ever paid by a company in the United States. Because what they did, I don't know why I got off on this, but I will. There was a scientist that worked for them when they discovered Teflon, which was an accident. So many great things are, are things that we think they're going to be great. And he did all the science on it. And he knew it was dangerous. He knew it was bad. He knew especially not just so much to us as in the environment and the way it was being handled. They suppressed that report for 21 or 22 years. When he retired from the company, he released it. He sent it anonymously originally to somebody in the government, in the higher ups, like Congress or something. And they read this 1100 page report and go to go back to the company and discuss it with them and of course finally track this guy down. And indeed, they knew there was going to be a problem when they started with it, but they suppressed it to the public. That's why they paid as large a fine as they did. Uh, I don't want to deal with people that do that, so I don't support them. So I don't use Teflon. Aluminum. You want to use aluminum to eat in? I don't know. Here's the only connection I know. All the cases of people with Alzheimer's, they have a tremendous amount of aluminum in their brain. 
way more than you. Now, the question's out. I don't want to be a scientist here. Is there a limit in the brain because they got Alzheimer's and there's something going on? Or they have part of their Alzheimer's problem because they 